In our Power Apps, we write data back to our tables. What happens when there's no internet, though? What do we do in those situations? In this app, I'm going to be showing you an offline capability. Here, I'm going to be putting in some data. A name, another piece of text, I save it. Right now, the app is currently connected to the internet, and you'll see that my table in Dropbox shows that a record was written twice. What if I simulate being disconnected? I'll put in some data. When I click Save, it goes into a temporary collection because it knows I'm not connected. But once the connection returns, it automatically writes all of the records inside that collection. I'd like to start by describing the table I'm using. This table, I called it data source. It has two columns, column one and column two. They both take text strings. Inside the app, I've added that data source. It's inside my Dropbox. The data from that table is set to this gallery. So all of the records that I write back to the connected data source appear here. Anything that was written offline appears in this box for the temporary data source. What the Save button does is it first sets a variable to true. This variable is important for disabling any other changes in the app. Next, it looks at this toggle. This toggle will return true if it's connected. The connection function will detect if you're connected to the internet or not. It could also look at whether you're on a metered connection or not. In this case, I'm currently connected to the internet, so it automatically turns true. If I'm disconnected for whatever reason, it automatically turns false. As long as it's true, if you are connected to the internet, write this data to the data source. This means write to a new row. The information in column one will be what appears in this first text box. The information that will appear in column two is the information that appears in the second text box. If you're not connected to the internet, write that same data to a temporary collection to be written later. So temporary is the name of my temporary collection. It's going to include an ID number as well. I'll explain why that's important later. And it takes the exact same information. At the end, I turn that wait variable to false. This exclamation point just means the opposite of, so the opposite of true is false. When that happens, information will appear in this second box. Now, what if it isn't connected to the internet? As soon as you come back onto the internet, this toggle will trigger true, and it automatically performs all of these actions here. It starts off at the top. If there is, if there is something to write, in other words, if this temporary collection is not empty, then do these things. If it is empty, don't do anything. That makes sense. OK, the first action is this block right here. For each of the records in the temporary collection, save their data to a new row in the collected data source. If writing was successful, copy it to this new co temporary collection called success to identify it. So here's the patch formula. It's the exact same thing as we saw in that button. It's here instead. The result of what you save is going to be part of this record up here. 
inside this table called success. If something was written successfully, something will appear here. If it wasn't, nothing's going to appear here. I also maintain the ID number that I had described earlier. This ID number inside that temporary collection is going to tell us if uh, we're going to be using it for identifying if something was successfully written or not. Okay, so all of the records in that temporary collection will attempt to be written. And once it's done, if there are no errors, if this is empty, clear all of those things. If there was an error, we're going to remove the records that were successful and then clear the successful records. Okay, so this means let's filter out all of the, look at the ID number of everything inside temporary. And if it's inside that successful table, if the ID number appears there, remove it. Then remove all of the things that are successful. So what you're left with is everything inside the temporary collection that was not successful. We want to keep it there so we can attempt to write it again later. Let's see it in action once more. Ms. Frizzle is a teacher. I'm going to pretend I'm disconnected. Notice I created this text box to appear in front just to give a big warning sign to the user that they don't have internet right now. I save it. This makes sense. Now, if I turn this back on, it will perform those actions again. Let's, let's have a few of these just so that you can see that it will write everything inside that temporary database. Ms. Krabappel. Mrs. Gorf. Okay. Let's pretend that we got that connection again. New, those new records will begin appearing here. One at a time, Ms. Frizzle. Ms. Krabappel, and Mrs. Korf. And then you'll see it all got erased because we don't want to write it again twice. That's why we need to clear this data source. I hope this was helpful. You could open up the app yourself and see what's going on. There's already a blog about how you could use this same feature for sending out a tweet. I provide these sample apps so that you could see what's inside. And the nice feature about this sample app is that I've included some commenting code. I learned about this most recently. In Power Apps, you could set off anything with a semicolon, and you could even set off text. This text performs no actions, but you could use it as a shorthand for commenting on some of the more complicated things inside your formulas. This way, someone who's opening up your app can see what's going on inside. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to remix this app, put up a hashtag Power Apps Remix, and then you could at me at 8 Bit Classroom and show me what you've created. I'm interested to see what you come up with. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more interesting Power Apps, please subscribe.